Uh, so, on to the agenda. Item 1 is members of Code of Conduct. Can I ask whether any cabinet members wish to be there? Any interest, Stuart? Okay, so that moves us then on to um, the first main item, which is item three, uh, delivering rules growth options uh, appraisal. And I'll um, kind of introduce this, this report and then open it up to uh, comments and questions. So clearly, uh, this is an important report. It's part of our um, strategy for delivering growth in the borough. Um, which is obviously one of the three key priorities in the rural plan. Um, we've also got three important pledges around uh, creating jobs, uh, attracting uh, new investments, and uh, establishing new um, uh, businesses, SMEs, in, in the borough. So it covers three key pledges. Um, and also within the rural growth, growth plan, which we agreed now some, some time ago, uh, we talked about creating appropriate delivery structures um, so that we can work more um, uh, easily and more spe speedily with, with the private sector particularly. And I know Anne, particularly as the cabinet member through the transformation programme, has been looking at how, looking at these new delivery models, but also looking at how we can um, maximise receipts from uh, council assets for investment purposes. And this is what this report um, talks about, how we, how we move that agenda forward. So, can I just remind Cabinet that last December we did agree um, to have a more detailed report setting out the, uh, the case for establishing a property company. Um, presenting options for appraisal and this report does, does that um, task. I think clearly the, the other reason why we need to deliver economic growth relates to, um, to our budget challenge. Uh, and we talked about this last week when we, we uh, tabled our budget because as we know um, by 2021 we, we will literally only have council tax receipts, business rates and fees and charges to pay for public services going forward, the, the main um, block of, of grant from the government, the revenue support grants being withdrawn. So it, it makes it even more important that we have a robust uh, and effective growth plan uh, to bring in those new those income streams that we will need to deliver good quality public services to our residents going going forward. Um, so that's the I think the other imperative uh, around this, this work. I think, you know, we've, we've said many times we've got excellent uh, opportunities, I think, for growing our economy in the world just now. Um, we, we are talking uh, very uh, extensively with potential partners around um, a plan for regenerating Birkenhead, Head, uh, but we've also got the, uh, the Royal Waters Enterprise Zone, where there are um, significant opportunities for new investments. A41 corridor going down to the to Bromborough, uh, the prospect of further development to New Brighton, the Hoy Lake Golf Resort, and so on and so forth. So we have a number of significant opportunities that we really do need to take advantage of now and see uh, real investment and jobs uh, come to fruition. So this report sets out options for developing this property company to enable us to do all of that, um, and the um, report is proposing the, a joint venture company as the, the, the preferred um, option. Clearly, this
this is a, um, a process we need to step, take in bite sized chunks. So the report recommends that we, um, we move to a full business case, um, which will come back to Cabinet in around May time. And that will be um, super, superseded by a number of workshops to enable members to better understand the detail around uh, the property company. I think that's, uh, that's welcome. Um, the report also proposes that we, we start the procurement process to identify a potential um, private sector partner through the publication of something called a prior information notice and then that to be followed by a period of soft market testing with, with potential partners. All of this work, as I say, um, will, will uh, need to be done um, in, in order to come back with a full business case so, if I can ask Cabinet to look at the recommendations on, on page 3 of the report. Uh, first of all, we're, we're being asked to note the objectives in paragraph 3.6 um, as uh, delivering the Council's ambitions against which the options have been uh, prepared. Um, recommendation 2 uh, confirms the preferred option is the joint venture company. Uh, which is uh, set out in, in, in quite a lot of detail in section 4 of the, the detailed report from uh, GPA and Federal Britain. Uh, recommendation 3 asks the Executive Director of Strategy to start work on the full business case um, to be uh, developed in support of this preferred option and, as I say, to report back to Cabinet in May 2017. Just to, to reiterate, uh, we, will, uh, we will in the run up to that have detailed um, workshops for, for members and officers to uh, get, get into the detail of this. Recommendation 4 is to authorise the Executive Director to approve the publication of this prior information notice to be followed by the soft market testing um, to, to inform the, the full business case uh, to be brought back to us. And Recommendation 5 um, authorises uh, Surgit, our Assistant Director for Governors, Governments to uh, negotiate, execute, do all the necessary, uh, necessary paperwork to enable all of those um, other recommendations to have to, to take place. Um, I think final um, recommendations, additional recommendation that I would like to uh, propose is um, we will be, or I will be going to a, an important uh, property conference in March. And uh, I will be uh, promoting World's case to um, some of the world's biggest investors and developers. I think it's important that we are able to put our best foot forward at that uh, conference because it is a, an absolutely fantastic opportunity to um, uh, uh, interest um, uh, you know, investors with, with um, the substantial funding to, to actually uh, achieve the regeneration opportunities I've referred to. So, um, given that we, we need to do quite a lot of work still in the next couple of weeks to get us to that point, I'm going to move the following that given the, the pending nipping event in March and the need to include the preferred option in the prior information notice, it is recommended that calling be waived on this report. Cabinet's decision is urgent as any delay caused by the calling process is likely to cause serious prejudice to the Council and the Council's Chief Executive. Um, has agreed this proposed decision is reasonable in all circumstances and that it be treated as a matter of urgency. So that's an additional recommendation, recommendation six, that I'm going to be proposing in addition to the, to the others that I've been through. So that's the report. Uh, can I ask the, do any uh, cabinet members want to ask any questions? Any comments, Anne? Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I think, uh, as you've outlined, it is important that we are. Um, ready and prepared to take advantage of any opportunities that are coming our way immediately to um, progress.
process of tendering and urging process that will start, they, they will have an opportunity to tender for uh, this work, if not for individual projects with bidders. So we're just, you know, just urging a bit of caution really on, on jumping on board with the joint vehicle, uh, joint investment vehicle, although we know that that will give us the opportunity to get to, um, to get going quickly, to get the skills, to get the money in. Um, I, I just, you know, I want to ensure that we take full, full view of other opportunities that are there. And I think we've got a process here to do that uh, as we go forward, because the full business case is not going to come forward to Cabinet now until May, uh, sometime in May. So, um, just from that point of view, I just, I just want to trade that, Chair. Okay, that's other comments? No? Okay. So, um, I will move the recommendations on page three, plus the additional recommendation I've read out to where you call it. Is that seconded? Seconded. Okay, so, uh, okay. Um, can I see all those in favour? Okay, that's carried. Okay, thank you very much. So, that deals with item uh, three, and we look forward to uh, progress on that important um, piece of work around the property company. Okay, I'm going to move it on now to item four. I know some of colleagues need to, to leave. Now, 
was to, to, to defend um, uh, particular applications. Um, and, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's absolutely right. I mentioned the, the, the Green Belt, which I, I referred to in the past, uh, and I do believe it's uh, rural's jewel in the crown. I, I do believe it's right that developers must continue to show that the phrase is exceptional circumstances um, to justify building on, on our precious green belt. And that was the argument I, re I remember in the late 70s when Arab Park Hospital was built. It's more recently been um, uh, uh, the exceptional circumstances has been used to justify uh, the application for a new fire station at Sawville Massey on the basis of protecting the public. And it's also been used in the debate that we've basically been having around the Oil Lake Golf Resort in terms of the economic benefits. But I want to emphasise that quite rightly, you know, at the end of the day, it's the, it's the role of the planning committee um, to um, make decisions around, around these issues. But I think the key message I wanted to send today in this report, as well as um, agreeing to, to uh, kickstart our, our process on the local plan, is I do believe that this a very aggressive top-down kind of housing target is putting really undue pressure on our, on our green belts. And I think we, we should, and I have actually written to the Secretary of State, say to government, I don't think this is helpful. I think we need to be given the, um, the powers to uh, set our own housing targets in line with our own, our own circumstances. And we know that 45% is, is designated as green belts. So I have written to the Secretary of State um, to, to, make that, um, to make that point. So turning to the report that is in front of us, clearly we, we will comply with the regulations and submit our local plan um, accordingly within the time scale. But I, I am kind of emphasising and asking officers to really look at um, all available brownfield sites, um, of which we have a number in the world, former employment sites and empty properties to, to, to reach our, our target. And I'm also really keen that we continue to lobby government for more powers to make um, landowners start building the homes that they already have planned permission for. I mean, I think there's somewhere in the region of 18,500 extant planned permissions in this world. And my message this morning is, you know, those people with planning permission need to get building. And if we just deal with about 18,500, which we've already got planning permissions for, we hit our target and more. So I think that is a really important message that needs to, um, to, to go out from, um, from Cabinet today. So, if I could ask Cabinet to, to look at the recommendations on this report on page 71 and just go, go through each of them very briefly. So, recommendation one will be asked to note the results of the further consultation on the, uh, the borough's housing needs and land supply. Um, there are a number of important evidence-based documents that we need to uh, take account of. So recommendation two talks about that we, that we agree the information from the consultation as set out in the appendices to this report that informs the um, Council's strategic housing land availability assessment. April 2017. Um, recommendation three, uh, the, the objectively assessed need for housing and employment is not determined until the Liverpool City Region's strategic housing and employment land market assessment has, has been completed and approved. Recommendation four proposes that the future designation of existing employment land is not determined until the employment land and premises study update has been completed and approved. And recommendation five, that the future designation of existing open spaces is not determined until the plain pitch strategy is completed and approved. Recommendation six authorises the Assistant Director for Environmental Service to consult the public and other stakeholders on this wide review of potential development options that I mentioned. And um, finally, recommendation seven is the results of the consultation on this wide review are reported back to Cabinet before the content of the draft um, core strategy local plan is finalised for submission to the Secretary of State. And our aim is to submit our local plan to government for public examination in early 2018. So that's
that's the kind of process that uh, we need to agree this morning. So I think at that point I'll, I'll pause um, and happy to, to take any, any comments or questions. Matthew. Uh, thank you, Phil. Um, <clears throat> if there's any, any uh, report that, that shows the Tories have abandoned that green belt, this is the one for it. I think we're seeing across the country um, the, the government's targets are putting undue strain and pressure on the green belt. And I think I saw that in Birmingham uh, the government lifted a uh, delay on 6,000 houses being built on the uh, so-called Phil Green Belt. I mean, this is, there's a really clear direction that the government are taking this in right now, and I think that our efforts to do, to do everything to protect that is, is really important. But just want clarity over this. So if we don't explore all options including the Green Belt, and therefore submit the local plan to include some of that, they can come back and say, you, you don't have um, speculative bids rather can come in and with the, with the government just go through. That's really worrying for me. So if we don't actually go through with what the government are demanding of us today, they will open up well, the entire borough for, for whatever speculative developments people have in mind. That's a real concern for our green belt and, and I'm, I'm, I completely support the recommendations we've set out, but I completely support the political position you set out today as well because I think it's a real worry. Okay, Anne. Second. 
secondly, to um, uh, agree and recommend to Council the approval of the, the Council's pay policy statement for 2017-18, which is set out uh, at the back of this report on pages 165 to 172. So, uh, cabinet, uh, cabinet agree those recommendations? Okay, thank you. So item six now is the uh, admission arrangements for community and voluntary control of primary and secondary schools and coordinating the scheme for 2018-2019. Tony, yeah, um, this place. Um, this is the uh, annual report that uh, comes to happening here. Um, this report sets out the admissions policy for schools in the world. The policy has been subject to consultation and um, no responses however, has been raised by a parent separate to the uh, formal consultation. This is about the local, um, the local arrangements for catchment uh, areas and the prioritisation of siblings. Uh, if you see the report, it does address the reasons for the uh, continuation of the current approach in the world, particularly in view of the local uh, geography and that. Um, and that's about it. Thanks, Stuart. Uh, again, uh, I think it's a welcome report, and it's good that we are, um, you know, we've got this uh, additional funding to improve our, our uh, network. So, can we agree those recommendations? Agree. 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 Thank you very much. <coughs> and uh, staying with Stuart, item nine is the Highway Structural Maintenance Program, 2017, 18, 2019, 20. Okay. Uh, also, the license which is set up for those investments that as I set up the future agenda, as well as all the different the liberal plan, the fact is that most of them use the transport area on a daily basis. As it sets out to my second three point one, the value of our highways networks is estimated to be two point four eight billion pounds and comprises of approximately twelve hundred kilometers kilometers of road. The table in section three point three illustrates the breakdown of the investment. On top of the funding that's been awarded to us from the Combined Authority, I'd like to highlight the 
news about the, uh, the additional funding, 3.2 million for highways maintenance. Uh, so recommendations are on page 244. Um, can we agree those recommendations? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, thank you very much. I've not been notified of any other urgent business, so that concludes this panel.